Edge will die today. That is what we're gonna do. I will not quit until it's dead. And, or two or three hours pass, and then I just get so fed up. However, I think when we got offline on the past stream, we got close, and then I was like, okay, we found a batch script that does kill Edge, but it, it doesn't do a great job. I, I wanted to include that whole thing into my uh, toolbox, but I didn't want to reference that batch script. I wanted to convert it to a PowerShell. So we tried to convert it to PowerShell, and I think I pretty much got it there, but we just have to refine a few things. We're really close to getting it there. So that's kind of where we're at right now with Killing Edge. So close, yet so far. <laughs> So that's that's kind of where I'm at. A little bit late today is again. It's I think it's just going to be my new start time, to be honest with you. It being so hot here during the summertime, it's like the only time I can stream. So, so be it. Oh, all right. Uh, looking at this, this is there. I'm going to check to make sure our branch is up to date. Let's fetch that. We do have some commits to pull down. Uh, which is good those commits in we should be able to pull up the edge script now before when we look at the edge script here which here let me we're gonna, we're gonna make this i need to fix my fancy zone so when i hold uh, i hate doing this is it right click no no that's that's not at all all right Stupid fancy zones, you're not working. Is it not launching on me? No, no, PowerShell tools are there. Hmm. Well then. And activation, launch. Ah. Hey, how's it going, goat? Launch editor and display. Hold shift to activate Y zones. Okay, so it's just shift to activate. I was thinking it was alt or, or the Windows key. Yeah, been a while since I used it. Okay. So if I hold shift, bam, oh, okay, great. So now I can do that. And then we're gonna have, ah, gorgeous. All right, great. I like it. Beautiful, we got little gaps, looks nice. It's a pro, pro streamer right there. <laughs> hey, Don. Oh man, yeah. It's a, a late start today. I usually stream a little earlier, but with the summertime, all I can do is do these late streams. Edge is gonna Edge is gonna eat it today. We're killing it. Yeah, I mean, Fancy Zones isn't bad once you learn it. It's it's a little different. It's like a Fisher Price version of Windows tiling. I mean, it's not bad. I kind of like that you can set up each zone. And I like it a lot better than snapping, although I do like the key bindings for snappings in Windows, like the uh, whole windows and then just press like the arrow key to snap it to the left and split it. Uh, so I still use those bindings every once in a while, but for streams, I kind of like a 70-30 a split like this so we can see chat a little bit on stream and, and work on our project. I might get a little bit more, I, but yeah, you know, it's always weird. Whenever you do this, I'm always tempted to where you want a little more screen real estate. But if you do 4K, then no one can see what you're working on. And it's like, eh. I'm going to go ahead and run this script just to see. Yeah, I, I agree with that. It does seem a little too small, but it's about as good as we're going to get. So we'll just toss that in here. Um, I do need to fix some of like my icon here and update PowerShell. Eh, I'll do it later though. For now, let's just uh, come over to GitHub when you till. I'm gonna run that edge script. Let's see what it does on run. We have a couple errors. Set item property path, edge path, remote registry. Oh, we're not running as admin. Rut row. Let's try that. Oh no, Fancy Zones doesn't work when you run it as admin. <laughs> really? Oh well. That's okay. That's okay. We'll just cheese it. Gosh. Microsoft. Alright, anyhow. Back to it. 
Yeah, I mean, Windows 10 and Windows 11 are pretty much the same, just a couple different things. Like, I like the aesthetic of 11 a little bit better, like the start menu, I kind of dig. Um, I, I also like the settings menu being more uniform. I like this. I think they did a good job with uh, updating the aesthetic of the settings and start menu. I just wish it wouldn't been quite as buggy as it is. Um, I'm not so sure about this widgets thing. This is kind of janky, so I'm not a huge fan of that. But to each his own, I suppose. Uh, so I, I kind of flip flop back and forth between 10 and 11 right now. If it was a production machine where I was doing a lot of work and I was like, I can't be down for any reason, uh, I would be on 10 for sure. No, it won't break windows. That's a that is a, a wife, old wife's tale. All right, so that did work. Did it fix? Uh, let's. I like to test links inside of Windows to see if it. If we also created a a program or almost like a, a shell script, basically that redirects edge requests to like Brave or your browser that's installed of choice. So you see, we have Brave up. I want to take this, and when we click this, it should launch actually into Brave, not Explore System 32. So yeah, probably some work that needs to be done there. But let's also test it on stock installs too. So we're gonna launch into our workstation, VMware workstation. Let's see here. We'll, we'll try and just run everything in the little tiny window today. <sighs> Alrighty, here we go. Uh, Google Chrome is pretty easy to uninstall. Their uninstall script actually works in uh, in that, which is, is kind of cool. Um, can we do an auto resize? I bet we can. Uh, Fancy Zones doesn't work with that, but I bet you free stretch? No. <laughs> no. All right, here we go. Here we go. This is going to be a weird ratio. Let's see if it works. Keep ask that ratio stretch, free stretch. I like free stretch. Let's see. Oh, I think we broke it already. Oh, what do you think about centered taskbar apps? Why did you stay to the right? Because it's how it always was. That's a good question. Like, I don't mind it when it's in the centered, but there's one problem. There's a bug in Windows 11 that it's not actually centering it. It's, I don't know if they like did it through like a division of it not like true centering but when you start adding stuff like a whole bunch of apps to your taskbar what ends up happening is the the start button should shift to the left right it should drift to the left and then make room for all the stuff you're pinning windows 11 is so stupid at least the earlier versions of it i, I probably need to try it again let's see if it i, I can just demonstrate it for you like when you do centered you'll see taskbar behaviors let's go center yeah it, it it feels weird you see how it's like the center of the screen it, it i don't know it just feels off to me once you get enough icons down here eh, i'm gonna leave it for now this is just not work what would have happened here i just see a black screen i broke it um to return your computer press control alt okay this is direct input into the vm okay uh, fine ah let's just restart guest hey mr gain thanks for the sub tier one two months all right yeah rain meter's fun and it's actually not too resource intensive i don't typically install it on most of my installs though yeah the bar is off center is it not it always feels off center to me. Like there's way too much space on the left and then it it like encroaches on the right. It just feels funky. Like, and you guys aren't even seeing like all the icon. Oh, you can't even make them out really. But the icons all drift over. So I'm like even making it better. So I don't understand why it is the way it is, but you know, one of them things, one of the things. I'm going to change it. I just wanted to like leave it for a little bit just to make sure it's not me uh, on crazy pills. Okay. That just feels better to me on the left. Uh, try our new Bing from your taskbar. Chat with new AI powered Bing. 
Yeah, try it. Let's see. Bing in the chat bar. Hot dog. Show us some Microsoft Edge. Okay, cool. All right, now we're gonna rip out Edge. That's fun. I gotta see how much. How many? How many? Uh, what is stock Windows process count? One fifty. It's not awful. About three gigs of memory. One fifty. Not. Not the worst. Yeah. It's kind of wild that they're able to get ads in Windows. I mean, we're, we're going to strip all this out, so it doesn't really matter. Yeah, three gigs on idle. Not bad. <laughs> not bad at all. All right, we're going to go to testing. We're going to see this edge. We're going to try and kill it. We're just going to grab the raw file. Copy it. See if it can work or not. So this is a stock version of Windows. I just want to see how it works like as we do it edge should die in the background and then it should kill all of it uninstall it and then go it's a little tricky to do it because microsoft added a block list for edge uninstalls so when msi util or msi exec tries to run and uninstall edge it's on a block list and immediately goes no you can't uninstall edge that was a conscious decision Microsoft made to force Edge in installed permanently. Um, and then they also added it into the image, which you have to change the image with DISM to properly get it out. Now, this script should take care of all those concerns in a perfect world, but we were having problems last time. This is just the first run on stock install. Let's, uh, oh, well, yeah. Let's actually launch and execute the script. All right, here we go. What are we going to get? All right, killed edge. Come on, baby. Kill them processes. All right, all right. Looking good. I like what I'm seeing so far. Web view history, edge, edge removed. Still some cleanup that needs to be done. Obviously, edge on the desktop here. You can see it. Let's try and launch it. No, oh, shit. So, no, that is it. It's still there still there hmm hmm man really let's let's try that again gosh that is impressive all right let's see yeah obviously this is not gonna work but hmm okay i want to just do their standard removal if you're unfamiliar with pad he was the one that actually designed the first uh, he, he redid, I think, AO NIYO, or some, some other dev got it, and then Pad grabbed it. And Pad's done some commits to the WinUtil as well. And his is pretty darn good. Let's let's take a peek here. Um, let me go into our WinUtil. And I think I went ahead. Uh, let's go Edge Removal. I think I linked the original script. We're going to run it. Yeah, I like to quote the sources. If I use someone's work, I like to actually quote it. And then let's see, here's here's what his is. It's a batch script instead of PowerShell. I'm almost to the point where I'm like, screw it. Let's just reference his script. So I don't think he's going anywhere. He does a lot of other work too, but let's just see. IEX. So here's his edge removal. Let's see if it can properly kill and get rid of edge. I think it does. All right. Maybe. Still thinking. Is it still going? Ugh. There's teams we have to do as well. Oh. Yikes. All right. It shows that it's finished running. It didn't give me any prompt though. Okay, I don't see anything there. It does not launch Edge, which is good. So maybe we just use the batch script. We can call a batch script directly from our script. Um, I'll probably clone the project just to make sure we have 100% of the control of it. But uh, it does look like it's removed. Let's just uh, unpin. What does that look like on a reboot? We'll do it also run our updates and see if it reinstalls it. And then we'll throw like Brave on here as a test. Yeah, we got to get rid of Teams, uh, which Teams is a little bit 
difficult to get rid of as well because they bake that in with uh, two different types of apps. Teams has a binary that is independent of the Microsoft Store, and then they also have one in the Microsoft Store. They actually might have four apps because there's also at one time there was a Teams for business and then a Teams for personal. <sighs> Microsoft likes making things difficult and likes pissing off their users. Uh, yeah, I've said it once, I'll say it again. The biggest cheerleader for Linux inadvertently is Microsoft. Because people are like, I, I hate Microsoft. I am I will just use anything else. I'm going to go use Linux. Or they'll go, I hate Microsoft. I'll go to a Mac, but I don't have that much money. Or I hate Apple. I'm going to just use Linux. <laughs> so a lot of times Linux is the biggest cheerleader for Linux is Microsoft. <laughs> it's kind of funny. Um, for this one, I don't see Edge. Oh, there's Edge. Let's see. Okay moon facts i want some moon facts now all right cool so let's just install um we'll do an installation of brave i i think would be pretty easy you could also do firefox too firefox is relatively there yeah i mean linux is a little bit of a crapshoot depending on your knowledge and skill set too and it also depends on your programs. There's a lot of things that go into choosing Linux. I mean, it's not just like a de facto standard. It's just most people will be driven to dr want to have the drive to learn a new operating system just because Microsoft has pissed them off so much is kind of my my point. Um, let's just do Brave. Install selection. Okay. It's looking good. So once we launch Brave, set it as the default, we'll see if the redirect works. So we'll just launch Brave. All right, great. We'll set it as the default. We'll skip the import. Finish. All right, great. So Brave set. So now if we're in here, or let's say here, how cold is it? Yeah, okay. So that does work. Fascinating. So it does redirect into our Brave browser. Dude, look how many trackers, 36 trackers on the, geez. Microsoft's just raking in the money at every every turn here. Um, so that works. What about our search? Let's try and go paint. Our app search works. What about web search? Um, what if we do the chat being? Oh, that's funny. Okay. Chat mode is only available when you have access to the new being. Uh-huh. All right. Which, if you want to get around this one, a little hack. <laughs> like, this is such antitrust. Like, anybody with any amount of brain cells can figure out what Microsoft's doing here. But just to show you how petty they are, user, agent, switcher, Chrome. Let's see what we have. User, agent, switcher, 2 million users. This should do it. Uh, the resolution should be scaled properly for the most part. So it should scale up and down depending on what it is. Some of the scaling is a little funky. So if you do like a DPI scaling on your, your system, sometimes uh, it won't all fit in there. But most times it will fit on all stuff as, as long as you don't mess around with DPI scaling too much. So let's switch this over and we can just say, I think Chrome, no? Do we not have... Uh, Internet Exploder. Oh, this user, user agent switcher doesn't have, doesn't have it. Hmm. Okay. Let's uh, let's just switch this over. Ah, used to my settings. Oh well. All right, we'll go user agent switcher. W what is mine? I have the same same thing. What is mine called? User agent switcher and manager. Really? well <laughs> uh, okay user agent switcher and managers what it's called all right good enough for me user agent switcher and manager oh there it is let's do that one that one probably has edge great so then we just click on this guy 
And then we say, hey, give me edge. We'll say we're on the latest apply. All right, great. Boop. And then we just refresh. And look at that. We can now use edge. So the extension that you're going to want is user agent switcher and manager to break into using edge without using edge or bring chat i should say it's so stupid like how is that legal that's not <laughs> i can't wait till they lose billions of dollars from some antitrust anywho moving on now edge is gone we have brave i think we just used the batch script i was just trying to reinvent the wheel converting that to powershell uh, I think so. I should spoof both. I guess we should have checked with Shift 12 or Shift 11 and looked at developer tools. Yeah, I think you can also just do it in Bing itself. Let's, let's try. I, I was doing it the extension way, the, the, the newbie friendly way. But let's go Bing chat. All right, Bing chat. Try now. No? Where's chat.bing? All right, here we go. Chat. There we go. How does Bing suck as bad as it does? Like, is it just me? But I feel like they should be better. All right. Chat. Oh, it's not. It's not working here. So it's just kind of flipping around between it. Okay. But I believe you can do Shift F11. Um. All right. Uh, it's not working. My hotkeys aren't working in the there but we can just go bah, bah, bah. or I'll, control alt shift i should get you there and i want to say was it application no but usually you can just come into developer tools at one time i was doing this quite often when bing chat first launched and then i just installed that extension i haven't done it since but maybe it's network nope close it's in here somewhere yeah i can't remember where it was in here but if you do want to change it it's in their developer settings where you can drill down and change it but i would say just use this and just click this and say apply to active window i think it's a little easier but anywho i digress <laughs> what is wrong with edge um nothing's wrong with edge i guess you could use edge if you want I, I just personally don't like Edge. There's a lot of uh, spying and just telemetry associated with it. I also don't like the fact it launches on your computer startup. So uh, another f false thing was when people launch Edge, a lot of times they, they're they like, hey, Edge is so much faster than every other browser. It's faster than Google Chrome. And I'm like, well, first off, they're just using Chromium, which is what Chrome also uses it's not it's not anything different on the back end what they did was they just launch half of the browser as soon as you start your computer up so when you go to launch edge it's already running in the background i don't like that i mean heck i don't even like it when brave does that you know so i i'd say that's kind of a problem for me i i wish it was just more of an option i know a lot of people use edge nowadays and i'm really I used to take a hard line and just be like, don't use Edge. I'm not going to be tiptoeing around Edge. Uh, but these days with how they incorporate it and pigeonhole a lot of people to think they need it or think it's faster, they've gotten a lot of adoption that way by tricking users. L love it or hate it, you know, I'm like, okay, users, if you really want to use Edge, I'm going to play nice with it with my utility. But Edge does have quite a bit of stuff you have to walk around, which I just don't like. And it's just dirty. Just just my two cents. All right, so this does work. I think we are ready to put this on the old main system. We'll see if this batch script fixes the mess up I did on my system, too. Have you used Night Night? I, I mean, Night Night's pretty... I don't think anybody uses Night Night this day and age. It doesn't, doesn't really make any sense. <laughs> night night was great like back in the windows 7 days and even even some of the early windows 10 days we used night night but i don't think anybody uses night night anymore it's kind of a, a dead tool in my opinion heck i mean
just launching into my tool. I mean, just look. I, I think I have more more programs than than Night Night. And we're not even done. We still have a lot to do with some tabs and other things. We we could break this out and, and really expand it a lot more. There's a couple things I really wanted to do with this and add to it. But yeah, I mean why why would why would you use night night uh, that's the big thing like i get back in the day it was super nice but now it's like man it's so nice having everything managed by a package manager and then it, everything can update and you not have to sit there and run some other tool in the background you can just do win get upgrade all and then it'll just go through your entire directory and then grab all your updates so yeah that that's kind of cool why would you uh, not want to do that? It's like, why would you want to use Edge? <laughs> There's more reasons not to than there is to, in my opinion. Yeah, and there's still some, there's still a lot of tools I need to add to it. As I started building out Windows again, I was like, oh crap, okay, I need to add that to my toolbox. Oh crap, I need to add that one too. There, there was still quite a few to, uh, add to the the toolbox which we'll, we'll get to in this next big update yeah twitch has some issues with buffering a lot of times you have to close your entire browser or uh, refresh the page whenever you get a ton of buffering the whole point of doing i think a twitch partner was so i could get the transcoding so if people are watching on a phone or if they're watching on a laptop you'll get a good bit rate and it'll uh, transcode it for you because I think all Twitch partners get it. Yeah, I think Chocolatey is really good. And Scoop's also another good one, too, if you really want to um, kind of check out uh, package managers in Windows. Between Winget, Chocolatey, and Scoop, you can get pretty much everything from a package manager. Each one has their own strength and weakness, though. There's not one where I'm like, that's the one you should use. Yeah, they're all open source. So this should be all up to date. Oh, probably should remove Team Viewer. Probably just install any desk anymore. Team Viewer is such a pain in the butt uh, that, like, even just using the free portion of Team Viewer is kind of pointless these days. Any desk does a better job, I think. A little more. I think Team Viewer still has brand recognition, so I think there's still a couple people that still have it installed, but ah. Uh, it's it's the devil. Hmm. Uh, I think version of what was it? One fourteen of Brave didn't update, but Brave up here, let's see, it should be one fifteen dot one fifty six nine. So that that's already successfully installed. We can launch Brave. Let's just close this. And is Brave running anywhere? I don't see it. So we'll relaunch. Let's do an about brave. What do we have for an error? Error. Uh, version 156, 115.0.57. So we got 115. It, it updated us. I think 114 did have an issue. So I think you were right on uh, Brave not auto updating on some of them. Oh, this one says 115.1.56. So maybe maybe it didn't. Oh, uh, okay. Brave published something about the auto update not working on their site. I'm sure they'll get it fixed. I decided to get rid of Firefox. Oh, really? What what drove you to get rid of old Firefox? Uh, <laughs> thanks, Marie. We'll eventually get it. I think we I'm pretty much just resigned to using the batch script. I'm like I can't. Oh wow. Firefox 115 can silently remote disable my extension on any site. What? That's kind of wild. Get out. Wow. All right. Okay. Yeah, I guess uh, Firefox. I swear Firefox is like its own worst enemy. If they would just kind of stay quiet and just kind of do their thing in the background. Uh, no one would ever bother, you know. No, nobody would say be the wiser. Everybody would be like, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, Firefox is cool. No, they just gotta go and ruin it. Uh, damn it, Winget. I don't think Winget worked either. 
Oh, that's funny. What? All right, so I think at this point, we're going to just fork um, pads, edge removal, bat script. This is pretty good. Let's see if it fixes my problems. Because I, I did a half. Mine's not the best that I converted to PowerShell, so... Let's just click a news article, see how it launches into Explorer. Let's see if we launch and run his bat script. We're just gonna take it and we'll do a launch of it. Do IEX. See if it fixes our redirect. I bet it fixes the redirect too, so then it'll open up in Brave. Yeah, I think Brave has high spyware. I don't disagree with the article. Yeah, there is a new one called Molvad. And Molvad has a pretty decent VPN, too. Okay. So we've got that. Now, let's click on here. Deal alert. Yeah. See, it did fix it. Okay, good. We're just going to use that batch script. Why reinvent the wheel? Pad did such a good job on this. We do need to give him credit for it. Uh, I think we can just do... We'll just come back to it real fast. Copy. And this is edge.bat. We're going to just... Uh, let's go invim edge.bat. Paste. Um, I want to add this to... Um... Let's get his name. Give him credit. Uh, da, da, da. Yank that. Put his name there. I think that should do it. Take that guy. We're removing the PS1 script. Adding that script. Edge removal. Push origin. Alrighty. So with that published... Now we got to reference the script. Um, I want to say we could just do another call from inside the script to outside it, but it's a little hacky. Don't particularly like that method, but totally doable. Let's see. All right. Standalone script by Edge. Uh, I gave him credit here, too. So I was already ahead of myself here. Um, invoke script. I'm trying to think the best way to call this. Could do like a curl output and then run it that way. Yeah. I think that's really the best way to go about doing it. Let's just curl it. And we're going to go output edge.bat. It's going to go into the temporary files. Uh, as far as escaping this stuff, we're just escaping the quotes with the backslash, which is fine. And we're going to call directly from ours. I love pad, but it, whenever you're creating a script or anything like that, you really want to house all your executables and batch files within yours because you just don't know... Even if the person's cool and you trust them 100%, you don't know if maybe their security's a little lax or someone gets a hold of their GitHub credentials. They could they could wreak some havoc, especially with something as wide used as mine. So I'm really protective, and I don't link to any outside executables or batch files except for Oh No Shut Up. I do use because if Oh No Shut Up does it, um, there's I mean they have tens if not hundreds of thousands of users using oh no shut up so that's why that one thing i do one ex exclusion to the rule uh, i think we're gonna need to uh darn it all right uh and we're gonna have to do to test this we're gonna have to push it to production oh well we'll just do another another push i don't i don't foresee any issues with it though and then we're going to start process edge.bat. And we are not going to do any arguments. And I don't even think we need to escape any of that. So we're good. I'm going to rename this edge removal. 
we'll just output it. Um, I kind of want to make that a little more specific. So now we got edge removal bat. Great. Yeah, and I mean, we could always, uh, it just depends on what we're doing. We're going to just quote the source, copy the, the batch file for now. We're not going to directly link it to another person's GitHub uh, repo. So, but I wanted to keep an eye on it too and see if Pat is and also uh, put comments in our code to say, hey, I didn't write this. <laughs> this was uh, pulled from here. But Pad has done a lot of uh, contributions to the project directly. He just happened to make his own uh, repository here. We're gonna say edge removal, push. All right, that should work. I don't see any issues with that. Uh, let's go ahead and establish a pull request. Let's compare and pull request that. Um, what do we have? Bunch of update edge to get rid of it. We have some security updates not getting set. They fixed that. An NDU fix, the slight task manager issue. Um, what did I do here? Update input XAML. Oh, that was just a typo. And then it's just been a bunch of working on edge removal. Ah, <sighs> darn edge removal is like the bane of my existence, but I think we finally licked it. We'll let our unit tests run. Why not uh, do it directly from the, we could do it directly from the app. Um, but I don't want to execute. We're already executing it remotely doing it. I'd be, I feel better about just curling that and just copying it directly and running it. Do you run Hugo on your server on your main work machine? Yeah, usually, uh, Darth, that's a great, for, for my website, everything's Hugo based. Uh, so Hugo's our static site generation. And then I push it all out uh, to Cloudflare for, for hosting. Uh, that's the CDN. So it's it's not really a host, but it, it is in the typical sense. I guess it's serverless, but uh, that doesn't suck. And it's it's really amazing. So all my website's done through Cloudflare and, and Hugo, uh, but it's not actually run here. We might run it like a test. Do I have Hugo installed? Let's see. Uh, if we go website let's pull let's go hugo server yeah i still have hugo here uh 111 so if i want to see like a local copy of my website with all future posts it would just pull it up so then i can go through and, and edit things still working on things i got rid of google ads on the banner websites uh google's cpms have gotten so low that I was ended up making between the banner and then I put one usually right before comments. And those were making about 50 cents a day or something. So it ended up being like $15 a month, but it made the site look worse. So I was like, screw you, Google. So the new website is this. I still have an anchor ad, which still makes a good bit of money. That makes like, I think $5 a day or so. But when you go into the articles, I, I wanted everything here now. So the anchor ads fine for pulling in money and it still pays pretty good, but all the article ads and that type of thing on the website, I was like, I'm just going to kill them. They're not making money and Google's not paying out. So I'm going to, I'd much rather host my store, you know, with download merch and more. If someone clicks on one of these every. 10 days and buy something from my store for like five bucks, I will make back what I was making from Google. So I was like, that's enough for me and it looks better. So to me, that's, that's my justification. I'm going to pull up my AdSense actually. Let's see. I'm always interested in websites. What is it making? Okay. Maybe, maybe, maybe I took a little bit bigger hit than I thought. Ah, Google, it's the devil. Uh, I was making anywhere between 12 and $11 a day from Google ads on the website. And then I just did the anchor ad and now I'm making, oh hell. Okay. Well, one to $3, <laughs> maybe I just remove the anchor ad altogether. God, you suck. Google, where is that? Where are you at? 
Where are you at? We're just going to kill them all. Not even worth it. You suck. Fly. Off. Here. We value your, your feedback. Have you used... Yes. Using it. I mean, the confidence. No, strongly disagree. You're going to do stuff. In the preview, should I see the ad area I want to exclude? Yeah, I guess. I stop on what it adds by using ad exclusion areas. Eh. Eh. Your rates are awful. <laughs> that's, that's it. We're getting, we're getting rid of Google ads. It's not even worth doing the anchor ad for a dollar or two a day. I'd rather just be ad free at that point. Everyone, almost everybody that watches me uses an ad blocker anyway. So, ah, whatever. That's hilarious. Forget them. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I think uh, much better for ad site for each article. I've seen that elsewhere too. Yeah. I go back and forth with, with Google Ads. Sometimes Google Ads does pay well, especially during uh, the holidays. So like November, December, you'll see ad rates go up two or three times usually. And that that can equate to like 20 or $30. And then you're like, okay, yeah, go ahead and toss some ads on my website for that amount of money. But when it's like a dollar or two a day, it's like you're making maybe 60 or 70 bucks a month. And then you have to deal with you know, your site looking worse for some users. And I'm like, eh, well, most people, most, I think most of my visitors are actually, you know, from, you know, use ad blockers. So it's not really, eh, oh, well, yeah. You block origins pretty good. And, and brave shields is pretty bad. Uh, brave shields does an okay job. I, I, I personally prefer to block it from a DNS level. So using not necessarily a pie hole, but you can use the pie hole servers and block, uh, block everything through a custom DNS. So if you're going to do that, you could do like a Docker pie hole. I think Docker pie hole you can set up in a Docker image. So instead of just doing, because I don't like Raspberry Pis really for hosting, like Pis are fun to play around with and to like workshop stuff. But once you figure something out, you're like, hey, let's just, uh, let's just do it in a Docker container on like a server. And then you just toss up everything. Otherwise I'd have like 20 Pis just littered throughout my house. <laughs> I'd have a whole, whole rack of just nothing but Raspberry Pis with USB plug. I mean, it would just be a mess. So just use a one one good server with you know twenty or thirty Docker's running on it. I think is what I do. Uh, probably using like Portainer to to run all those Docker's too. Uh, or actually, we should probably just run it through an IRM. Did that commit go through? I forget. Oh, did we not merge it? We never merged it. We never merged it. I'm a I'm a big goob. Now this was done here. We'll. We need to check the win util after this just to verify that it actually did all this <laughs> because win util should should work technically. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. I approve my own changes now. It's not going to allow me. All right. Since I'm the only one that can prove, let's squash and merge it. <laughs> Ah, uh, I, I kid, I kid, I kid, Darth. It's fine. Like I said, I'm still such a noob to programming. I, I can't say anything from any position of authority. I'm just getting back into coding. Okay, if you don't want to install VS Code and just run it from browser, you can go to vscode.dev. Ew. Like, I already cringe when I launch VS Code. I could only imagine running VS Code in a browser. That sounds... Oh, sounds dirty. I'd like want to take a shower after just saying that sentence. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah. Oh, let's see if uh, we do have a workflow that should run and rebuild the main branch here. Let's see. When you till one minute ago. Okay, yeah. It does look like that worked. We're going to just double check here. Uh, edge 
remove. That looks wrong. Remove edge. Yeah, that does look wrong. Okay. So I guess the compile didn't work because this technically has a workflow built in. If we look at GitHub workflows release, it should run and compile. Yeah, should run this on um, on there. So uh, what happened? Hmm. <laughs> Good to see you, drummer. Take it easy, man. Oh, you prefer web apps? Hopefully this removes reliance on Windows. Um, I don't know. I, don't know. I really like NeoVim a lot. I just wish I was better at it so I wouldn't use VS Code as much. Eventually I'll get there. One day. So this builds the run space. <sighs> Runs on Windows latest. Uses step with that. Create local changes. Run. PowerShell exe forward slash compile get auto commit action v4 compile when you tell why didn't it run history so yeah this is just not running <laughs> damn really we got to fix our workflow oh, yeah it's always something it was running let's see um let's just ask chat gpt create a github workflow for running compile.ps1 on a new commit let's see what it spits out all right define a yaml file blah 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 create a directory github workflows blah blah compile okay perfect runs on ubuntu latest oh e that seems weird. I guess PowerShell does properly compile using Power or PWSH in Linux, but that compile with it running Ubuntu dash latest. <laughs> okay, I was like, wait a second. You can't do that in Ubuntu. I guess you could with some packages. Okay. Anything else? Does anybody else see anything in chat that's like, hey, that looks very sus? <laughs> um, okay. Uh, Bard and chat GPT. Yeah, I need to start using Bard a little bit. I mean, both kind of suck, to be honest. I've used Bard a, a little bit, but not not as much as chat GPT. Uh, like I said, every, every, every stream, I'm always like, geez, chat GPT, why do people keep saying you're really that good? Because... It's nice to bounce stuff off of you, but a lot of times I'm reading through it, I'm like, wait, 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 wait. That's not right. Like, runs on Ubuntu. This is PowerShell. What the hell, bro? Check out Claude AI. I haven't heard of that. What is that? Talk to Claude. Claude Van Damme. A constitutional AI supports AI according to set principles with the goal of making whatever. I don't care about that. Next generation AI for your task, no matter the scale. Our API is currently being offered on a limited set of customers and research. Yeah. Claude.ai. I might check that out later. Yeah, it does it does get confused too easily. Lies and confuses way too much. I think it's it's bad input that it gets. Like it's reading so much data that it's hard for it to figure out what's right and what's wrong. But what I do like it for is it gets so much input that it's going to spit out a whole bunch of crap that you wouldn't get on like Stack Overflow. So then you can, if you kind of get an idea of what you, you know, kind of what you're doing, you can be like, oh, that's cool. I didn't even think about doing it that way. Uh, I don't know if that works or not. Let me do a test. But you always have to test it. And probably 50% of the time it does okay, but you have to refine it a bit. Uh, the other 50% of the time it just spits out garbage. So, I mean... Is it going to replace the job of a programmer anytime soon? Absolutely not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, we need to... Let's just do... A, we'll just do that. One second. I, I, me fix it. Me fix it. One second. Um, here. We're going to just do chat... Yeah, I'm, I'm getting sidetracked. Uh, dot, dot, dot. Compile. I like that. 
I don't know why that wouldn't work though. Huh. I'm not seeing maybe on the marketplace this auto commits not working. I think it's compiling. I think this top part's actually correct. I think the auto commit action's wrong. So I think this doesn't exist anymore, maybe? Let's see. Ah. Yeah. So we have get auto commit. Yeah, there it is right there. Get auto commit uses. Ah. Come on. Oh, shoot. Let's just copy it. I don't want to use all that, though. Maybe he just uh, refined his script a little bit. Um, commit message. Status options. Commit message. I think just underscore commit compile should be fine. Let's commit changes. All right. It's fine, I guess. Yes. Never done this directly in here, but that should be fine. Yeah, I think that's it. Uh, funny chat finds it exactly the same time. Uh, all right, create pull request. Come on, guys. I don't. I don't have time for. Don't have time for that. We need to get this back up. People are gonna start emailing me like, "Hey, the script's not working." Squash and merge. <laughs> it's, it's gonna be a quick fire. Bam. Pull request. Merge. Didn't even bother with the unit tests. Let's just go. <laughs> so this should auto compile. And when we look back on here, we should have a commit ish. So this should probably change and say, um, it should have a commit directly to win util in right here and say the compile or whatever workflow ran. So then if we go back into here, we go into workflows. We see that the release right here, we should be able to look at the history. That's fine, but let me see if that's running. What's the history here? Uh, I still don't think that's going though. I don't see that that did compile it. Shoot. Well, let's fix this first, I guess. <sighs> let's do a fetch I don't think there's anything to pull but we'll just do it anyways um what being used by another process uh oh what did I do what did I do hmm okay I guess we gotta oh I, I, uh, let me just kill this branch uh, I committed this, but I, I really did it back here on test. Dang it. Really? You know what? Screw it. It's, it's not worth it. It's just, oh, I'm sure programmers watch this stream and just cringe the entire time. What am I doing? What am I doing? What am I doing? Just, just no, just delete it. Just goodbye. Bye bye fine gonna go to main we're gonna go here let's just switch it over to main we're just gonna go all the way over here boom all right fine we're on the main branch we're gonna compile compile then we're gonna come back here it's gonna say hey we fixed all these things great we're removing all this we're adding this one liner for you perfect push perfect and then over here We'll just reload. I mean, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it takes a while to wrap your brain around GitHub. I think it takes like a good two years. I mean, I'm, it's getting there. Maybe three or four years for me. I'm a little slow on the uptick, and I feel like we're getting there slowly but surely okay so now we have that this is committed and if we go edge removal or remove edge sorry so here's a remove edge you see that it's now up to date let's look at the raw file that's done so we're good 
gosh. Still don't know why that stupid workflow is not working, though. Uh, all right. Let's uh, IRM Chris Titus. Uh, that was interesting. What if we remove? Uh oh. What was all that about? Well, let's just pull it from. We'll just pull it from a secure channel, just to make sure. Uh oh. Did I break it? I broke it. Damn it. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> Oh no! Broke it and dead. Oh, think run space dispose. Ow! Uh, bro. Uh -oh. oh, damn it. Okay. Ooh. Easiest way. Okay, let's just revert it. Easy. Yeah, yeah, still doing the C sharp one. I wanted to update the main toolbox that everybody uses first, though, before I get back to the C sharp. Oh, it does? Okay, click on the red. So, red X. Details. Oh. I'm such an idiot. That's hilarious. Uh <laughs> Click on the red X. Oh God, that's hilarious. I'm sure you guys are just sitting there screaming at me. Oh, okay. Must be done through a pull request. Rejected. Okay. So how do we exclude and allow this to work without, uh, to bypass the protection of the branch? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Let's ask, well, let's ask chat GPT. <laughs> oh. How to allow a workflow in GitHub to publish to a protected branch. Hmm. Oh, shoot. Oh, this just got shit. All right. Oh, son of a, all right, man. Windows Office <laughs> Activator using KMS. I mean, KMS activation method has been around forever. I haven't used that one, though. Man. Thinking, thinking. One second. <laughs> I'm totally thinking that right now, Alex. I didn't have to mess with this crap. We just compiled it locally in our Borland C++ compiler, and we liked it that way. It gave an error, or it gave us a go, and we were like, hey, it compiled. We're good. <laughs> now you got all these fancy workflows and protected branches and GitHub and... Oh, Lord. You know what? I'm just... Hmm. Disable? Yes. Yes. Disable branch protection rules. Yes. You see nothing. This is totally fine. Fingers crossed. <laughs> Let's hope it doesn't delete everything. I think we're fine. <laughs> Don't worry. We only got like 5,000 or 6,000 stars on here. Nobody's going to notice. Hey, success. Protected. Protections for a bunch of wimps. <laughs> All righty. So now we've got the compile when you till. Bam, bam. We've got that. We go to raw. We looking through. Remove edge. Everything looks good there. All right. We fixed it. We probably should run it to make sure we fixed it. Um, you can get around it by doing all these things. I'm like, nah, I'm just going to unprotect it. That's, that, that just looks like too much work. All right, we'll get back to here. All this looks fine. And mm, shit. Ah, well, uh, well, hmm. Damn. It's okay. 
One second, I will fix this problem. Slight issue. I think, uh... Okay. Just probably too much white space. Um, that's what I'm going to go with. It's the white space problem. <laughs> Shit. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I forgot to run that. You cannot call a method on a null... Oh, jeez. I done messed this up. <laughs> that's not a spell <laughs> <laughs> oh, where's the backup oh no no <laughs> oh let's look back through our history here do we mess anything up here it's fine just looking through my changes surely there was something in here that I must have missed and caused some unintended quant consequences that's okay we're just gonna fix it i'm sure it was something very simple that i'm just overlooking I did i did have quite a few commits in here oh damn it i don't want to go back through all this let's just go back from today because we really haven't done much today i think we're fine just going back four commits, you know, just just uh, right here. Let's just uh, what do we do? Hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, power shell's a tricky beast. It's a it's a fickle one, and it's not one that's uh, easily fixed. Um. Yeah, and these were all really good commits, though. Uh, broken. <laughs> Let's see here. We're just going to go to the broken branch. Now, <laughs> we're on the broken branches. We're going to call this one. Uh, let's get out a little bit. We're going to do a compile, and then we're going to run this thing. And if it works, then, uh, you know, we'll uh, take another stab at doing it properly. So... Um, let's just LL that. We're on broken. Get status. Yep. On broken. On branch broken. <laughs> uh, let's do a compile. Let's do a win util. Oh, shit. It was an earlier commit. I didn't compile the damn script on an earlier commit. Ooh. Chris, Chris, Chris. You silly, silly man. What were you thinking? Shit. So it's probably, if I was a guessing man, I bet you it's some something I did when I was fixing up the updates. Uh, bet you maybe something in here. It, you, it's all working fine for you guys. Shh. Wait, am I just? Oh, am I just having a moment? Wait, it can't be as simple as just shut it down and relaunch it, can it? Oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you reboot? Dang it, man. We missed the golden rule. Did you reboot? No. Did I shut it down and relaunch? No. <sighs> Shit. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Well, let's see if remove edge is working. Nice. Okay. So I guess that works. All right, good. All right. Well, thank you, chat. Uh, this is why I do these things publicly. So I can avoid uh, doing something really stupid privately. <laughs> this was dumb. But man, if I would have kept going, going down this rabbit hole... Oh, it would have gotten really bad. Oh, leave my changes unbroken. Yeah, let's just leave them unbroken. Um, let's uh, pull origin. Yep, yep. All right, we're back on main branch. 
Everything's perfect. We're looking so good. We're just going to pretend like that branch didn't exist. Um, what? Where is that branch? Where'd it go? Did the broken branch never really get created? Oh, I never published the branch. I just created it in GitHub. Oh, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, this is just junk branches. Oh, okay. We're good. All right. Um, everything's fine in the world again. Oh, yeah, yeah. Let's test it in a VM. Good call. Good call. Uh, let's go snapshots. We're going to go original. Yep. Revert that back. And start her up. Man, that was a close one. I got to tell you. That could have gone really bad. Oh. All right. Here we are. Let's uh, let's test it up on a fresh brand or fresh fresh install of Win 11. Oops, misspelled that one. Nope, I don't want to install chocolate, but you're gonna ask me anyways. All right, so we have Edge going in the background. There's our Edge, beautiful Edge. I hate you, Edge. You can go die in a fire now, Edge. Please just stop. Go away. All right, so we go to tweaks. We go remove edge. We run the tweaks. Edge, die. Looking good. I think it's five packages in total. There's edge. One more? Yeah. Now it should just go bye bye. Any second? <sighs> yes. Edge, goodbye. Edge, no more. Nice. Um,. Let's install Water Fox. Feeling spicy. Here we go. I've never installed Water Fox before. Sure. 64 megs. I kind of want to put Cute Browser on here just because Cute Browser is like 5 megs or something stupid small. And it's really nice for testing. I, I really do like Cute Browser. All right. So we got our Water Fox. We'll launch it. It'll probably prompt for defaults. Okay, yeah. Make default. Yep. Not now. Dark theme. Beautiful. So then we go here. We go Moonbound. Artemis team. It should launch Waterfox. Updater.exe is running. Sure, whatever. I don't care. It's a VM. There we go. Launched Waterfox. Wait, is that Edge or is this, is this Waterfox? I don't even know. Oh, no, it's Waterfox. Okay. <laughs> cool. Nice. All right. So it does work. Everything looks good. We have committed to main. We'll create a new branch now. Let's shut this guy down. Magnus! Thanks for the tier two, man. Seven months. Hell yeah. We got to play some... Uh... Oh, what, what did we play that one time? It was terrible. You were carrying the team. The shooter game. <laughs> I'm drawing a blank. <laughs> uh, Apex. Apex Legends. There it is. Oh, boy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let's make another test branch. I agree with that. The test branch needed. Branches. We're going to create a new one. We're going to call this test. 7 20 2023. Actually, I kind of like to go test... 2023 20, 7 20 because if like you ever look at it in like a list form it would be test 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 but then like the year would be where it sorted it from i don't know in my brain that makes sense that's why i like to put the year first i don't know maybe i'm just crazy well i'm definitely crazy but hey i like it all right that's pretty cool yeah, we'll still have to update some of that. We could take a look at that uh, batch script to un and clean some of that up. Right now, I just kind of wanted to get Edge out of there. You gonna go full time with any tinkering with Linux gaming? Uh, you going full time? Well, so uh, let me see. Let me let me first get this. Like, um, all right, that should be good. I would say uh, when it comes to full tech with any tinkering in Linux gaming. I 
don't know. Like, I, I flip back and forth quite often. I love, like, the next project after I update WinUtil, probably do some coding and get our C Sharp project done with Win One Shot. I don't know how long all that it'll take, but once that's done, I really want to get a polished Debian Titus done. So that script will work for everybody because I really do like DWM. And I probably past that would really enjoy learning a whole different language like Go. Because Go is is one of those things that I'm kind of interested in from a language perspective, maybe even Rust after that. Uh, but I, I just want to think of like fun projects that I can stay in Linux for that might have application. And maybe it's just go back to C and just do C, just regular C or C++. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people, uh, all the cool kids keep talking about Rust, but I don't know. Yeah, I mean, C++ is what I used to know. So I know my knowledge is somewhere in there. It's got to be. It's like in the old creaky corners of my brain, like the attic area with full of cobwebs that I can't access any of the information. But if I, I feel like if I started really working in C++ and building programs in it again, I feel like that knowledge would come back to me. I mean, yes, it's like 24 years old at this point. Maybe, no, 23 years old. I think it was 2000 was really the last time I was really programming on a daily basis in C++. But it's somewhere in there. <laughs> Simply. <laughs> I do remember, like, with C++, I wasn't, like, super gifted or anything. Like, I, I could do, I think I was just getting to pointers and some aspects of C++ that were uh, difficult. Uh, memory management and pointers was a little bit of a mind F, I remember, from back in those days. But, I don't know. I don't know. Rust seems like what everyone wants to use. But a, a lot of it, I still like old, old stuff because... It's what all the programs of yesteryear were programmed in. And I like the ability to kind of tinker around in that stuff. Where a lot of stuff won't be made in Rust, I think. But I don't know. I don't know. But in today's age, there's just so many resources. That's the thing I think everyone misses is... I would kill to have a tenth of these resources 23 years ago. Everyone was like man you had to go read books and the books were outdated and then there'd be updates to the the compiler and you'd be like oh shit i none of this even is relevant anymore and you'd have to try and find another book uh, or or maybe if you're super lucky you could get on the internet and maybe pull down like uh, some of the information there but it was, it was very rare so that's why i'm like man i, I i'm really excited about this next bit just getting into it more. I don't know if books were fun. I think that there's there's some some nice features to them, but a lot of times you're reading chapters just to find a paragraph of useful information. That's the main problem, especially when it comes to technical books. I've read a lot of technical books and many times I'd go through an entire chapter and there'd just be like one or two lines that I really needed or took from that chapter most of it was just fluff or garbage that uh, or outdated information that's no longer relevant and that's the main problem with a lot of the books especially in the program because the a lot of the language at least technical books that i've read in the past it just the information and the technology moves so quick that the books become outdated so fast <laughs> a friend used to use a tech call number that caused bank to call to get answers yeah yeah, and that's the thing, like, today you have so many things, like, you got GPT or, or any AI-based stuff, like, they were mentioned, like, Claude, you have um, auto fill tools, like, when I was doing the, the C-sharp, that was so much fun when I was looking through it, and uh, GitHub Copilot just pops in and just says, hey, you need to, you really want to fill this next line in, this is... I see what you're doing. Let me just fill it in for you. And then it just grabbed all my syntax and, and kind of felt and, and was able to program to my style. I think that's super cool. There's like so many time savers. I wouldn't have 
copilot write functions for me or anything crazy like that but a lot of times it does auto fill stuff according to how you're coding which is neat yeah and I, i'm tempted when i say like c or c plus plus a lot of that comes from when i was messing around with like dwm i was enjoying myself immensely when i was booted back into there like when uh i, I have it installed here we can boot into it so i just really really enjoyed it but i think i'll probably save that for another stream uh because i was like i'd get started but i gotta i gotta get gotta get out there on the porch and start fire up the smoker we're having some people over tonight so i was like no 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 don't don't get into dwm right now titus you're gonna you're gonna be gone for another hour and then it's just you're not gonna have time to start the smoker and all that <laughs> Uh, and then, then I might probably, you know, knowing me and, and my absent mindedness, I will probably forget something and have to run to the store. Have you seen Sound Switch? It's a program to chant. You can uh, change your audio device with one click. Um, I don't use Sound Switch, iTech. A lot of times I use like Ear Trumpet, which, what do we have here? I don't have it installed here. Haven't really used that. Let's just. Uh, Let's just run it. And I want to say ear trumpet. Yeah, there it is. There was another one in here too. Somebody else asked asked about. So we'll throw that out. So if you look, and we'll just launch ear trumpet. Yes. Cool. So then you got ear trumpet, and then you can select everything here and then kind of throw throw out everything or you can uh, change your, your defaults as well. And you get the legacy Windows 10 style, which is kind of neat. Or you can go legacy mixers, playbook, playback devices, because a lot of times I'm like, hey, I need to go to my recording devices and shut certain things down. Uh, ear Trumpet's just so nice. I love Ear Trumpet. Highly, highly recommend. Mark, thanks for the five gifted tier one subs, man. Have a good night, man. <laughs> what what does that look like now on twitch does it show oh, i don't have it loaded up here but they have uh yeah they have certain things on twitch now where the alerts can be pushed off because a lot of times i like taking these videos and then cutting them up i mean every single stream i'm cutting up and putting on uh, titus tech talk because that's where it all is but i realized that you can do alerts directly in twitch chat and then it it does all the stuff and i was like that's so cool so it won't mess up my feed for youtube for someone like gifting stuff and it can also have the alerts directly on twitch and i was like it's the best of both worlds so i can make videos from this live stream cut it all up and also have twitch alerts but the alerts are separated not directly baked into the video they're actually on the outside of the browser image and i was like hey that's pretty awesome i dig that so i get a really clean recording and i'm able to recognize people that that donate i think that's awesome so it's actually something good twitch you don't hear about twitch doing good things but that is something new that i'm i have tried out and apparently it works it's awesome <laughs> how to remove the annoying icons from the start menu usually the icons like in here ooh, we might be able to actually go into like uh maybe app data percent app data i bet they threw that in local let's see i bet it's local microsoft what do you think they put it in windows maybe uh if i was a betting man probably windows could be shell no uh they probably hit it again i remember messing with the start menu and they keep kind of shifting around where they put it shell start menu i don't think that works anymore not for baked in apps we can try it real fast that's an oldie because i use shell startup all the time um edge no microsoft yeah shell start that's a that's a good uh, shortcut to know but i i knew they didn't put it here microsoft like to pull 
pull a fast one on us and they hide it uh now there is so it's roaming microsoft windows start menu we could also look at public so let's say we go public backslash app data is that a thing no public app data is not a deal apparently in app data microsoft internet explorer really no so we're in app data roaming microsoft windows oh microsoft internet explorer really quick launch user pinned implicit taskbar nope so that's for down here so that gets rid of that but i mean you can unpin those they don't lock that down user data low no uh, it's kind of funny that's a leftover remnant but nope it's not in there either what if it's common start menu i don't know i've never used that shortcut it used to be oh that might be it Let's see this is looking good there's edge delete and do we have that might have done it you might have actually got it let's see so you have i just deleted it from mine did that get rid of edge it's looking good yes yes it did it's the common shell it's so cool the old shortcut still works so if there is something in here you want to get rid of look in shell colon common startup and you'll get it there it is shell common start menu so that is the command and that pulls this up just go in here delete what you don't want that's cool okay i forgot all about common start menu i i've used shell start menu before but i can't I, it's been a while since i've used common if ever i i don't know that's awesome man <laughs> i learned that from you but you forgot it sounds like me it sounds like me a lot of times i put all that stuff on my website a lot of times i'll put it on christitis.com and then i'll just completely space out and forget i'm like oh oh okay oops hey why is this still showing ads i thought we killed all the ads oh really wait a second these shysters you're gonna remove all the google code hmm what are they doing all right we'll just get rid of no script what else we got we got any other google stuff nope all that's gone let's check my uh, probably head probably a partial let's see if there's any if there's google here but i already replaced all of it and commented it out google add enable let's look at our config possibly google tag management okay delete that what other google stuff we got any other google all right google ads enable false nothing for google analytics all right great okay cool that should do her um let's commit that just make sure i don't have anything i can get status config and base of what did i change in the oh that's right i did change the base of delete google cool all right that, that should update i was like why is that still there oh yeah yeah good to close the not working edge issues nice yeah we're slowly getting through it it's a it's a little bit of a slog getting through a lot of uh these things but uh what's the last commit what's that called history yeah this was the edge removal that was the commit we need okay so let's just go edge oh boy dude look at this we're about to close look at we're about to close some freaking issues awesome well three issues oops look at us look at us professional github users here whoa this one really goes on for a while 
Yeah, that's where I actually pr I probably looked at this and I clicked on his edge removal because he just com uh, just made that comment back in May of 28. So we're going to use his batch script on that. Look at that. We are now down to 135 issues. Damn it. Kind of feels like it's growing. Ah, oh, we've got like three or four different new ones. I have this on every <laughs> more elegant. Uh, this guy wants me to add a whole bunch of crap to people's host file. That's not a solution. That's a hack. <sighs> Is a DNS server you manage that makes these changes? Oh. Yeah. All right. All right. All right. Nice. Closing issues down to 134. Felt like that's the number I said last stream, but. We're getting through it. Uh, maybe tonight I'll, I'll get a wild hair and just decide to close a whole bunch. Uh, but I, I feel like the edge issue was a big one. Some of these are going to be really easy to work through. A lot of them will be. Like emulators and WinUtil probably won't add. Um, uh, just, just little stuff like that. A lot of these I'm like, hey, uh, ensure correct values on that. I probably... That, so it depends some of these will take a long time to fix some of them will be more short like real easy ones like creating sdo uh installer on the drivers that'll be really easy to add a button for that um yeah just, just those little things or fixing hibernation that that would be super easy to uh fix as well but very neat very neat cool we made a lot of progress today Little little touch and go there for a bit with uh, my terminal just crapping out on me and starting to spit run space ever errors everywhere. And then finally someone from chat was like, hey, this works for me. You probably shouldn't do all that. <laughs> uh, this greatness. Yeah, nothing corrupted. That's great. Oh, man. All right, guys, I'm going to shut her down for the day. I'll see you guys next Tuesday. We'll see what we're doing. Um, I don't know. I do need to get in here and start. Uh, probably uh, over the weekend, I probably will just spend some time going through a lot of these issues offline. Or maybe I'll spin up like a Saturday stream and just go for like 12 hours or something. Because a lot of this is, it just takes a lot of time to work through. But some of it will be pretty easy too. But All right, y'all. Have a great one. See y'all in the next one.